Sean, you're very welcome, Sean Pronti, uh, ex Lanford Town uh, player. Absolute pleasure to have you on, Sean. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time out. I'm looking forward to our chat. Yeah, really. Look, I, I appreciate you reaching out to me as well, and um, I'm really looking forward to this as well. It, it's uh, it'll be good to get some uh, insights into, I suppose, sporting people in in Longford that come out of Longford. Absolutely, and like your experience alone, and even your story, Sean, is so important. And you know, it has it has everything, and it has a valuable lesson for us all. And as well, I want to stress from the get go that. Like obviously, I'm from a predominantly GA background myself, so I'm not going to pre- pretend I know the ins and outs of soccer because, being honest, I don't. I have played the game as regards Saturday, Sunday league, and I follow it. I'm a big fan of the game, but like anything, you know, it's very easy from the outside to pass judgment or give opinions, but like you have to actually play the game itself, you know. So yeah. <laughs> I just want to clear that up. I'm not going to be I'm hoping to learn a lot from you now today to be honest. But uh, Yeah, no no problem with all that's that's uh, always... you're a Liverpool, you're a Liverpool fan, you're telling me as well. Yeah, I'm a big Liverpool fan. Um I can actually remember from growing up as a kid in Dublin when I first started um supporting them and yeah, absolutely uh, mad about Liverpool back in uh, when I grew up in the 80s um, out in Ballybrack in, in, in Dublin. And, um, you know, once I got a Liverpool kit for uh, Christmas, so I was the happiest person in the world. <laughs> Who um, was on the back yeah, of the shirt? Yeah, it was, it was just one of these things. As they, growing up, it was supposed it was either Liverpool or Manchester United. And, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I just, I love the... I think there's, a, there's such a close link between Ireland and places like Liverpool of a huge interest in history um, and where the Irish people tend to sort of uh, disperse as, as things happen, um, you know, whether it be recession or whatever it might be. Um, and obviously Liverpool is such a, is, so is an area where you find a lot of Irish names in, in particular. But um, yeah, big, big Liverpool fan. Yeah, true. And uh, it's gas. When I was thinking back, my back in the 94, 95 days. Like, I'm a Blackburn Rovers fan myself, so... Okay. It was my father threw a, an Alan Shearer book in front of me one day, and so of course, I jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, suffered as a result, but it's one, it's one funny old banter to have a Liverpool friends of mine was this, the last time the Premiership was lifted in Anfield was actually by Blackburn. Blackburn. <laughs> by Blackburn Rovers, yeah, and by a Liverpool, a Liverpool manager, an ex-Liverpool manager That's right, well, yeah. So, which is but quite interesting, yeah. I think, well, unless there's a... Uh, a freak uh, change of events this year. Now I think it'll be, uh, you know, that that'll all that'll all change. It's good to see the season hopefully kicking off again. And yeah, it is. Just, uh, it is. Yourself, like you're looking forward to it. Yeah, I am indeed. And I, I, like for any sport, really, you know, like I'm, you know, my uh, my current role in is, involves sort of working with people within sport, and yeah. you know, it's just great to see, um, you know, pitches beginning to back, maybe back open up again. You got the swimmers back uh, training rowers back training and uh, it's you know it sort of gives you a bit of a buzz because I think when you when you don't have sport or you sort of didn't grow up with it um, you know it's sort of easy not easy to dismiss it but um, you know I think it brings so much joy it brings so much pain to people as well you know yeah. depending on what team or, or sport you're maybe involved in but you know I'd always associate the summer for you know the, the GAA season or you know, whether it be the World Cup or the European Championships or different things like that. But yeah, it look, fingers crossed now over the next number of weeks and uh, coming months that we'll, it will all get back up on. on yeah, the, exactly. Uh, Some sort of normality. Really, I, I found it really in that first two weeks when everything started to change. You know, you'd be so used to quipping out the phone and looking at a clip of some sports you'd be watching or... and. It was all just gone then, you know. Your... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and I think as well at the beginning, like there was, you know, there was some really good, like Lazard and GAA were like on on social media were putting up like really good things in terms around scale, like and yeah, like and, and, and I found that really, I thought that was really good for them to do because then you'd find young kids, you know, out trying these things and look, that's what I would have done as a as a kid growing up. I would have, you know, watched them. Um, tricks of like Maradona or maybe John yeah. Barnes and I go out and try and replicate it so um, yeah it's, it's so I suppose what it's done as well is that it's given guys who may have not have had a platform um, and by going out and doing some social media stuff um, it's allowed them to get their name out there which is which is great to see yeah exactly and as you touched on it there like when you were younger and you were you know you were um, 
reenacting a lot of these moves from these famous players, it kind of brings you back to when you were young and you'd be going out and you'd be using your imagination and you'd be playing in World Cup finals in your back garden and you'd be yeah, to these certain players. Like it's, you know, just, yeah. it's, it's cool to see that again. Yeah, it is indeed. It is indeed. Yeah, cool. Right, Sean, I'm just going to show your accolades here, first of all, and uh, we'll have a little talk about them. I'm not sure now if you're one for... Uh, but at this stage, are these, you know, do you still... And like when I asked you to put your accolades together, do you have you got are they pride of place in your house? Um, they I, I have them. They're, to be honest with you, they're, they're not sitting uh, yeah. proud on on the on the on the mantelpiece. It's I think when like I obviously proud of what I've achieved as a footballer, and I think when I retired from football, um, the fact that I'd won something it it made retirement a little bit not easier. But when I look back on my career, I was able to say, well, look, I'd. I performed as best as I possibly could. I gave my all and it was with Longford Town. And we were very lucky um, within the period of time. And I should say I was very lucky within the period of time that I was, you know, under some really good managers. There was some good good squads there as well. And for, for me just to be able to, you know, talk to my kids even now, you know, to say about, oh, this is a medal that I won. But it's um yeah, I, I, I'm I'm proud to look back on it. Um and sometimes you have to sort of realise of what you've achieved uh, within the game or you kind of have to say, but look, I, I, I gave my all for my period of time playing football with Longford Town. Um yeah, my career could have I felt my career I retired in twenty uh, when I was twenty eight and I actually felt I could probably have because I was quite very professional in my attitude, I probably could have continued to play until I was about maybe thirty five. Um, anyway, so and when I when I'd left Longford Town, I was able then to I was I obviously moved to Drogheda. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was. But looking back on my career, I was really really happy. Well, I would have liked a couple of more winners' medals, but unfortunately, it's not the case. Yeah. Well, look, getting. I know when you look back, you're like everyone wants to cross the line, but they're still their huge achievements getting to that stage at the time, you know, and getting into those finals and competing, you know, that's. Like you think of all the other teams, you know, we forget other teams that fell at the first hurdle and didn't get near it. You know, it's if, yeah, exactly. I know, I know it's no consolation, but it's it's still, you know, there is a sense of achievement in that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and the thing is, is that with the the League Cup runner up in two thousand and three, um, funny enough, actually, we played uh, St Pat's up in in Chicago that day, and I can remember the day like it was yesterday to be on beautiful evening, and um, huge crowd from Longford. And I, I actually didn't, I didn't, I didn't start the game. Or actually, so I think I could have been, I might have even been injured. But I remember we lost, and we were really unlucky to lose. Barry Ferguson had missed a penalty, um, and we we ended up losing the game. And I remember coming in after everyone was deflated, and, and Stephen O'Brien, our goalkeeper at the time, says, "Right, this one's done and dusted. We go on and we win the FEI Cup." And we just, we whatever the mindset, whatever it was in that period of time, what he said. We actually went on and we played St. Pat's again in the FEI Cup final. Um, and the rumour beforehand was that Pat's had already, um, literally, they, they got uh, jerseys or T-shirts made saying FEI Cup winners. But um, what, I think what spurred a lot of the guys on is that we, we were opening up papers that morning and no one really, no one at all gave us a chance. And uh, like some of the comments then about, I suppose, the players were, you know, yeah, good player, but you know, there was always a but behind yeah, it. And yeah, I know. um, you know, and, and it's you take that you take that really personally, um, you know, and I can I can even remember opening up the thing and seeing a comment about me and I went, oh, fuck you, sort of thing. <laughs> so it was um yeah. and which which is fair enough, you know, yeah. you kind of got you, you look, you, these are the type of things that, that happen as a footballer. But yeah, I was absolutely delighted then obviously to to be to beat Pats and then that the same year we, we beat Bowles in the uh, League Cup final in, in um, Flanker. Yeah, they were amazing times. Like I like my personally my household wouldn't have been soccer. Like you know my I grew yeah. up very GA dominant, dominant and a bit of rugby. My father was big into rugby, but um, my cousin Marie uh, McCormick would have been. Big I know family. Marie yeah, very well. Was, yeah, and um, actually when I am here, there's a fellow in my class. Uh, his name was Enda Muldowney, and Enda passed away. Tragically, uh, years ago. Yeah, I yeah I remember. Yeah, Endo was a great supporter as well. Like you know, and um, it's funny when I made contact with you. I was thinking of Endo. It's just you know, it was uh, you know, I, I just when I think back, I, I the excitement around the place, what it meant to people. Like you know, it was just a fantastic, uh, fantastic period. There was some buzz that time. Like when you think, there, about yeah, it. there was. Like I um, 
like I the first FA Cup final I can remember um we'd won the cup and I took the cup and I legged it to where our fans were and, and I, there was lads that I'd gone to school with from Balnilly <laughs> that were there and you know sort of they were out on the pitch and and you know and it was great to see because I hadn't seen the guys in, in such a long time um you know yeah. like we you know I'd left uh Balnilly and I'd, between sort of Longford Town I'd been in England um so I hadn't seen the guys in in, in quite a while so but for the support, it was brilliant. Um, we spent myself, myself, and a good friend of mine, Alan, Alan Kirby, who also lives in Balnally, um, we we went out a couple of times, or one night in particular in Longford. And we actually just this is only maybe about a year ago, but we talked to supporters, and it was just like, oh, what was it like for you? It was from your side of things, and the stories that they were saying, it was it was brilliant. That actually made you appreciate, yeah. you know, um, how much you gave up because it meant so much to the people. Um, Look, they were going to games, they were traveling, they were paying money for us to, to see us play and stuff like that. So to be, at the end of the day, it was, you know, all you can do is your best. But once you, I suppose this is a cliche, but once you put your jersey on, you know, you do give it your all. And I've always said, as a footballer, I'd never have considered myself like, a pro, like, an, like a, an elite footballer. Like I was, but I was really professional in what I'd done. And, and that, that, that can you can outstrip or you can outwin your opponent just by even being that individual, you know? So, um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a fantastic time for the county and it was, a, it was a great buzz. Yeah. Great for you lads actually to get that other perspective of the supporters, you know, because that's one thing that always struck me and I would have knew, known from being in the presence of them was like, they, they loved that team. Like, you know, they were, yeah. you know, they really did. And it was, they were, it was great support. You know, I'm sure you could see that as players too. And there was a great connection there as well. There was, there was a fantastic connection. And, and, and the person I think who probably built that up was Stephen Kenny, who's obviously now the current Ireland yeah, manager. And it, was, yeah. and it was actually Stephen who got me to Longford Town because when I came back from England, like I had literally no interest in playing football really anymore. Um, so it was, I was working in a, in a, a, sh- a shop up in, up in Grafton Street. That's right. He made a couple of attempts to... He made contact, a f- quite he, a yeah. few attempts, yeah. And um, like he, he, to this day, I actually only he was even in contact with him the other day. And, um, but it was Stephen that really got the, the connection going between the fans and the, and the players. So if we didn't go back to uh, 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 the pub after or whatever it was um, at the time, we were fined. And, you know, but everyone went back because actually everyone wanted to go back, um, you know, because you'd, you'd get to meet these, the people who, you know, maybe had two, were bringing out their kids. Um, you know, I was in a place in London about, uh, I would have been six years ago. I got talking to a guy and he was saying, oh, I'm from Cavan and I used to go down and watch Longford Town football play. Um, he says it was sort of, it was local to me, but there was a guy there called Sean Prunty. I just start laughing. <laughs> and I says, oh yeah, that would be me. And he goes, Jesus Christ, he says, you've, you've, uh, you're, you've changed or something. And I was like, really, did you go from travel from Cavan down to Longford to watch, you know, travel? I don't know what part of Cavan he was, but yeah. Uh, yeah, he used to travel from Cavan down to, down to Longford to watch his play and, um, but you know that's how that's how far we sort of reached in terms of you know getting people into sort of supporting the team. Yeah, I was, it was brilliant. Like it was brilliant. Like I just goes to show you, you reached wide and far. You know. And yeah, exactly, exactly. Wasn't like remember the scenes on the telly? Oh, sure, it was unreal. I can only imagine I mean, what it was like the atmosphere at the game. Was like sure. Was yeah, the, the atmosphere was it was brilliant, and yeah. it, it was um it was just even. I look back on old pictures even now, and I see sort of familiar faces faces people that aren't with us anymore um, and you know, know and it's um you look back and, and like even young lads that you're like they're only nippers but they're like now grown men and you're like jesus you know, know like you think where where's the years gone and time um, is scary yeah it, it is it's it's, mm. it's 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 scary but um you know you look back and you have to admire of what we achieved because um, we didn't not that we overachieved um, but it was just that we had a, we had a really good work ethic we had a good squad we had good managers good coach um, didn't not, look people didn't always get on with each other you, and that's the nature of the game you don't yeah. obviously you, you, you don't always get on with your manager or your teammates or whatever it is but you know once there's a single collective goal and everyone yeah. buys into that then um, you know you're, you're, uh, you're set up for success if you do it right yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll have you'll have that in every setup. You know, it's a part of it. So exactly. Right, so I'll just run through them quick, Sean, and then we'll um, 
we'll just get where it all started then, if that's okay yeah. with you. Uh, so, the, obviously, your FAI Cup winners, 2003, 2004. FAI Cup runner-up, 2001. League Cup runner-up, 2003. League Cup winner, 2004. And FAI Cup runner-up, 2007. So, like, you know, we just, we just touched on little things there now. And I'm sure it's those little moments looking back on photographs, remembering people, you know, and as you said, people that maybe... They aren't around anymore just there's a, a kind of a comfort there that they were there for those great times and got to experience them because Lamford Town was and still is you know life and as, it's one thing just to get away from it, I started going over to Blackburn games there recently myself only in the last two or three years and I went over and like obviously Blackburn would, it's, it'd be very quite personal at the minute because attendance wouldn't be great yes. you know it seems like it's stuck in so that's kind of the beauty of going over there at the minute too it's you get tickets you'll get into the bar before the game and you get to know people, like, which is mad. Yeah. And to see the way of life it is for people, like there was a couple there, um, the first game I went to against Leeds, and uh, they were 40 years going to games together and they go in for the Sunday lunch before the game every weekend, you know. No so, way. Yeah. And I was just like, I was like, that's a different world. You know, it's a different, you know, that's what it means to people there. Yeah. And, it, it and means I'm sure so it was too. the same for the Lanford Town supporters here too. It was such... A massive part of your life, you know, when you're in, you're in so engrossed in sport like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's um, yeah, it's a huge thing. Like if I go from one game to another, and like my dad would have went to like every home and away game, and yeah. you know, my mom would have went to the games, my sister would have went to games, my brother-in-law who wouldn't be like a, a big uh, football fan either, he would have gone to games as well. So you know, you're you're bringing people, I suppose, bring bring people within the community together. Um, which is which is great, and I think the fact that obviously as mentioned earlier on, like obviously I'm the Dublin accent, but I, I very much a, a Longford a Longford person, and you know for for me it was just great to be able to bring people together, and it didn't matter whether it was you it was GAA, GAA or whatever, you know if you're getting success, um, and a team it should be should be getting success if they work hard. I think um you know the the you get the just rewards. Yeah. For sure, Sean, well said, well said. So let's go right back where it all began. You know, I suppose you, you want to start from when you moved to Longford? Yes, so um, I suppose the it was a bit of a shock to me when I was told I was moving. My, um, I can tell you, the, <laughs> the second I got told I was moving, I remember there was a for sale sign showing up outside the house up in Ballybrack, and I was actually playing football with my friends at the time, and... Um, my mom and my uncle arrived in a in a van and my ma just says, um, <laughs> Okay, you take the dogs and you're going um you're going to stay with your nanny out in Bally Fairmouth and literally that's the way it was. I it was I was I remember saying to her when I'm coming back and she was like, No, no, you have to go and mind the dogs and that was it. Um <laughs> so the, my dad was already living down in, in Balnalee and um, okay. because he, he was um his parents lived just outside the village. So he got a job working within um Within on post down in the village, so it was it worked it worked out perfect. Um, but I I thoroughly enjoyed. I loved living in Longford. I loved living in Balnalee. My I was a little bit worried to be honest with you at the beginning because I I didn't know if soccer existed or football existed, mm. and because I, I knew it was a, a very much a GAA count even at that stage. Course, and, yeah, um, and then you know if if I'd be able to play football or whatever it might be. So, but I think. Soon after I joined the, or soon after I was enrolled in the school in 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 Ballinale, um, like there was the community games and there was the local leagues as well. So, and actually, recently only found a scrapbook of, um, of pictures and there's lads from Clo that would have been back around nineteen, nineteen eighty nine, nineteen ninety, um, you know, and it's just like young lads from Clo that we were playing in games. So it was it was nice to look back on. Yeah. I'm sure. Good. But it's it's funny it's funny when you say that when you come back you're concerned about the soccer. Like nowadays as a teacher myself, like you look out in any schoolyard across the county. Yeah. Ninety five percent of the kids are playing soccer. Yeah, yeah. It it is. It looks so it's, still, it, it's it's it is so popular. I, I, unfortunately it's just going through that um a rebuilding phase, I think, now at the yeah, moment. Is, uh, yeah. which which is what what's what's happening. Um but there's there's great people involved in it in in in, in football. Um and you know I, I think once if they can get the investment and um they put a, a, a proper structure in place, you know, I think then it, the, the the game will begin to grow again. Um 
You of course, it's down I, the line you want these guys to have a chance to be, you know, talent to be spotted. You know that you, it. I know it's it's easy to say, but it's it's very difficult. You know, because oftentimes players have to go to certain players, certain counties to get noticed. You know, or to yeah. get their talents, and that's a real difficult thing. Whereas, you know, you'd love for it just to start, you know, to develop properly in their own county and get to that stage again where you're you're recognised playing for where you come from. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's one of those where, you know, there's a great base there within Longford. There's good coaches there, um, fantastic stadium. And it's about, I suppose, investing in that and, and putting the time and effort into developing the game for their, not just in Longford, but outside of that um, as well. Obviously, at Long would, would have always been seen as a, you know, real soccer hub. Um, but like Longford, you know, it has the potential to be huge because you've got really great coaches there, like even coaches that would have coached me as a as a young boy growing up in um up where we used to do all our training in, in, in every cart. And so yeah. um so yeah it's it, it would be fantastic to see it um I suppose get that buzz again. Um you know I think the the current manager Dara Doyle who I would have been over on Shile with at Middlesbrough um you know I think he has a really good potential um as as a manager. Um, he's played the game at a very high level um, and he, he's respected as a footballer as well. Yeah, so please God now, things will keep turning yeah. and keep onwards and upwards. Yeah, so uh, getting into soccer then, Sean, when you moved down and where did it all start or your first involvement? Um, it, was definitely, it was definitely the community games and um, I suppose playing in the, in the yard in, in the school, in the national school in Balnalee, um, like it was... I just always had, a, like most kids, I suppose, like whether, whatever sport you be, I would have always had a football with me. Um, like, and it was, it was like stuck to me constantly all the time. Um, and I was never really an outgoing, to be honest with you, I was never really an outgoing person. Even when I went to uh, soccer camps or anything like that, I'd be, I'd be very quiet as an individual. So, but what I knew was that I kind of, my, I was able to sort of, play very I was able to play well and it sort of allowed people then to talk to me so soccer was a great outlet for me in terms of interacting with people um you know and I I found that kind of growing up as well um you know if you're if sort of I'd be now I'm more outgoing than I was as, as a young individual but definitely the it allowed me to make friends within Balnalee and um, after the community games then there was the um, the local leagues and then I moved from uh, I, well, I started playing then with Tefia Harps um, you know, on the green there with Tefia well, Would um, that have been your first local team to play with Tefia? That would, have, that would have been the first local team to play for yeah okay, and, cool. um, and even at that like even the guys that we had playing back then were from, like really good footballers like they were mm. So um, you know they went on and, and would have been involved maybe in Stephen Kenny's first year at, at Longford Town, um, but yeah, we like uh, Joe Farrell, who was my coach there at Tefia Harps. You know, just had a, bo- a bag of balls. We used to just bring them out, and we, it was just sheer enjoyment. You know, mm. um, you know, dad, mum and dad sacrificed a lot in order to me. I always wanted to be a footballer anyway, um, but they sacrificed a lot and um, for me to. I suppose try and get be the, or achieve the dream of going to England, um, you know. So from from a very young age, I just always knew I wanted to be, a, um, you know, a Great professional support, footballer. Yeah. yeah, and and it was it was good support structure. Um, you know, they I had a good close knit uh, group of friends as well. Even growing up, like I was never able to get like I could never get in trouble when I was growing up. Is because my ma would have. You know, even if I cursed, I'd be like on the woman two doors down, be like, I'm telling your ma you cursed. So I was like, Jesus, I can't, I can't do that in here. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was just a really good support network around me. And I, I worked hard in, in order to try and achieve a dream of playing in England. But you do have to make these, um, these sacrifices yeah. in order to do it. Some guys it comes to naturally, some guys it doesn't. Um, you know, but I, I definitely put in a lot of uh, hours personally, but also my family as well, in order to, um, you know, to have some success within within football. Yeah, uh, it's it's a very important role parents play, you know, in their their kids' journey. You know, it's a difference in making that effort of bringing them here and there. It's uh, yeah, absolutely, you know, absolutely. It can't be underestimated for sure. And um, you were obviously spotted at a local level then, Sean. 
Yeah, so I had, um, I'd, I'd gone down to, when I went from Tefia to Atlone Town under, I think it's under 16s or under 17s, and um, I'd went over on trial to QPR, um, I think twice or three times, um, and I'd done really, what I felt was really well played um, uh, games and sort of scored, there was um, assists and stuff like that, because I would have been an out, very much an out and out winger back then. Um, but that didn't happen. It was sort of it was a knockback. I think it was about fifteen years of age, you know. And you think the world is going to end, and it's not of the course, case. Yeah. You know, I came back. Um, I moved up to Belvo, uh, Belvedere Boys, then in Dublin. I was only with them one season, and I went over on trial then to Middlesbrough um, on three occasions, and it, it was great to get it. But I was very much wanted. I was like, oh God, I'm going to miss home too much, even though yeah, I might have been gone away for yeah, very much so, and. You know, a week was like like a month for me. Um, you know, it was like ringing home and they were asking mm. me how I was getting on. But the experience, I think the first training session that I went to over in Middlesbrough, I was in a, like a, a keep ball session or a, like a five-a-side session. And there was like uh, Ravenelli, there was Emerson, there was uh, wow. God, like Mikkel Beck, who was a striker. There was um, like just a standard of players. And I was like, what the hell am I doing here? And like, I mean, it was like things were being, balls were being knocked at you, like, and you were just <laughs> had to be on your toes. It was, it That's was amazing. It was, yeah, it was, it was absolutely amazing. And, um, but it was a great experience because I remember, you know, coming off that going, Jesus Christ, okay, I now need to understand or know, now know what I have to achieve or do in order to sort of progress. And I was, I was lucky enough then that I came back for, uh, a second trial and we I would have been about 17 at the time and I remember we played a game up in uh, Newcastle uh, against an under 19s team and I as I said I was an out and out winger I was put in midfield and just you know it was just one of those days where everything absolutely clicked for me it was I even sort of now think back and going Jesus Christ you know it was one of those where anything I'd done just came off. And um, I remember uh, the manager at the time as well, and I actually was only in contact with him today. After the game, he, you know, we were in this changing room and he just made me stand up and he's just like, stand up there. And I stood up and he was just, you know, he says, any of his want to progress as a footballer, just look at this guy. And I just went, Jesus. And I, I, was, wow. I was filled with pride. I, now I couldn't wait to tell my mom and dad, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, so it was... That for me was another confidence builder. Oh, huge! Yeah, so um, because again, it was it was just one of these games. I said, like everyone has it, where you can do no, you feel you can do no wrong, and um, I, I was just lucky enough that day that things things went right for me. And then there was a tour trial, and we played against them, um, sort of an under twenty one with Middlesbrough, but there was like capped English guys there playing as well. Um, and I was playing against the next English international there. Uh, I think it was under 21. Um, and I had a great, I was really lucky again. I had a really good game and scored and dominated him as a, as, um, on the day as well. So it was just one of these things that sort of again, they, they said after that, um, I got a phone call to say, look, we'd, we'd be happy to offer you a contract, professional contract at Middlesbrough. Um, and that was it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. Like, and your mindset, Sean, at, at that time, ha had you a sense of, like, I'm going at these guys, or was, like, you, you obviously had to overcome, like, you're seeing these superstars, as you talk about your first session, you know, and, yeah. I, like, to get over that first, so you can actually work on why you're there. And I know you're so young at the time as well, so it's... Yeah, that's actually, it's a really good question, and, and I think you just, um, you get in this mindset of trusting in, your ability, you know what you're yeah. good at, you know what your strengths are, you know what your weaknesses are. So you obviously play to your in that situation, you play to your strengths um and you just you you just graft and because like no one's going to like you, you'll obviously get shouted at if you sort of give a ball away, you're playing at a high standard. But as a young guy, people will see you're trying to do the right thing, managers will see you trying to do the right thing. Um and but you just you just trust in your own ability and I think that goes back to is that you know I was quite shy when I would have went over on trial I would have been sort of quite shy would have been sort of like oh how are you probably didn't as an individual wouldn't have kind of mingled too well if I'm if I'm being honest but once I got out onto the pitch it was like right this is my time to try and do something yeah. um, 
And I, I think that's generally what, what would have happened. Um, you know, sort of, I just went out, just played with a total freedom. Um, you know, didn't sort of think about the pressure or anything like that. Um, and I just totally enjoyed it. I'll actually look back, even think about it now. I look back at those three experiences just to say, well, think of myself as, yeah, actually, I really enjoyed my, 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 my football back then. Um, and was lucky enough then after, I think, the third occasion, um, as I said, signed for, for Middlesbrough. Sure. Such a moment. Can only yeah. imagine. I can only imagine. Like, it's fair play to you for, for being able to bring yourself back to what mattered at that time because I'm sure there's been many who's been swallowed up by the occasion over there, you know? Yeah, well, look, it was, it, there was times when I, when I did sign, um, you know, that you doubt yourself. You're going into a, a squad where there's, you know, like when I, I signed this in inverted commas, teammates, um, <laughs> but they're looking at it. They're looking at an Irish oh, yeah. guy. They're looking at an Irish guy coming over. And I can totally get that. Absolutely. 100% get that. And, um, but you, you just sort of have to you you grow up re, you grow up really quickly. And I said this countless times that you you know I went over I think at seventeen and you know you, you literally overnight you grow up. Once there's a challenge put to you, you know there's you you have to become you know a, a man uh, like suddenly yeah. that you have to stand up for yourself and you don't want to be seen as a um you know as a, you know that a weak link or you don't want to be seen as someone that can be a pushover. Um, so th- I think that was another good experience that I got um, from from being over at Middlesbrough, um, and I was really lucky that there was a great cohort of Irish individuals there at the time. Um, there was Curtis Fleming, um, there was Andy Townsend, um, mm. there was Keith O'Neill, there was Alan Moore, and then there was a, a, a group, a strong group of Irish young lads, and um, we all sort of ch- palled out together as well. Um, you know, lived with lived with the guys as well, and we always had each other's back no matter what. Um, you know, so there was always that um, strong relationship there between the the Irish guys anyway. But in Middlesbrough was a, a fantastic club. It was, you know, it was such a family club. Um, the the players that they had at the time, you know, like you had you had a manager who was one of the best midfielders in the world at this time, and Brian Robson. And mm-hmm. um, you got Viv Anderson, who was the assistant coach. Um, you had, like Peter Shilton, who was a, a goalkeeper, goalkeeping coach. Um, you got like players like Gaza and um, Paul Merson. All these players. You had Janino, the little small Brazilian. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you um, you you know, you great, class. like really top class players. And you know, you sort of when you're going out when you're training, you might be called into the training session with these guys, and you just go, okay, look, I need to have have me a game here. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's just it's it's fascinating listening to you, Sean. I, that experience and uh, uh, Roy Keane just popped into my head there now. I know he's a very obvious one because you know you're thinking of Irish soccer sporting heroes and you're thinking of fellas, but just because of the way he played the game and I'm just thinking of you know yourself coming over sort of afterwards, like he kind of would have went before. And you're talking about that Irish player coming over and kind of you know if you want to be honest about it, probably been looked down upon mm. and like saying what is this that coming over for like you know this is a waste of time but the likes of Keane would have laid down a marker you'd hope in the sense of he, well you could you can tell me if I'm right or wrong but it strikes me like that if, if he went over he would have made, made an impact in the sense that he would have maybe instilled a bit of fear in the yeah. way he played like in laying down a marker and saying yeah well he probably come over that at you you won't laugh at me you won't look down at me yeah, and I, it's probably the, the sort of the mentality that we have when anything to do with England, if I'm being honest yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's sort of just because of our just because of our history. Yeah, um, exactly. So and, and it's 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 yeah, exactly. So you know, in in anything, you know, you um, you know, even sort of when I was in my working with um, Connecticut over in in the UK, um, you know, you'd still get people who would be sort of just questioning Ireland but you know what the thing about it was and uh, you know I learned as I got older and wiser is that they just don't fully understand the history um, of our country um, and get get really get it if I'm being honest with you they're reading or they're getting told a different um, yeah, of course. His, yeah. history story than what we're being uh, told here but I do, I do think it's it is good to have that in you because it can be a drive for you, yeah. you may not necessarily be the, you know, one of these guys like a Roy Keane, but you know, you go out and say, okay, look, I'm going to, you know, go out and I'm going to give it my all, um, you know, on 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 
and use this as a, a sort of bit of fuel to get, to get you through and, and give you some um, yeah. some uh, confidence. Exactly, because look, I know there was there loads of players that went before him, but I suppose he kind of epitomizes that sort of aggression that, you know, he would have, I just was off, I'd often be curious, like, did, you know, without yeah. realizing that he may have paved the way for, like yourself, coming afterwards, because then, you know, from then yeah. on, probably, they wouldn't look overlook Irish players anymore. You'd be saying, God, no, look, at, look at the beast they brought over in that lad, you know. So yeah, exactly. And and even after that, I suppose like the guys that they've that have went over from um, the League of Ireland. Look at Seamus Coleman, Gon yeah. Everton, obviously Keith Fahey, um, who had went over to Birmingham from Pats, and um, you had Paddy McCourt up in up in Derry that went over to Celtic, and you know you'd like really so. really Shawnee Maguire from. Cork City went to Preston, Daryl Hall. Like, there's a whole host of these guys, and yeah. um, you know, and but they, it's it is good to see Irish guys getting it, it, the opportunity. And um, obviously, John Egan, he was playing within, um, and then the Stevens of Sheffield United are having a fantastic season. But it's good because the like John Egan's dad, I think, played with Kerry a number it was many years ago. But it's great to see these guys get an opportunity and really excel and um, within within the top league over in the UK. It's a, it's a phenomenal achievement, like you know, when you get to that stage. Yeah, absolutely. So your Middlesbrough experience, Sean, like I'm sure it was an amazing experience. Was there lots of challenges in there? Lots yeah, of, lots of it, from 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 day one, it was an absolute challenge. It was, and I think it's it's because you challenge. It's more you challenge yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, like the the training I'd never been used to. The body was in shock um from the first pre-season the first week of pre-season was an absolute grueler and um, like it was double maybe even triple sessions at one wow. point um, like would this be like what weight session two running sessions or weight yeah. weight session it could be two yeah two running sessions and the running sessions could be like um you know uh sort of true trails different things like yeah. that um the, the the you'd have speed sessions then that would be marked there which would be um, uh, an absolute ball breaker, um, and then you'd have the the the, the gym sessions as well. So, um, but at Middlesbrough, what was great about it, the the first the setup was phenomenal. They had a, a state of the art training ground, um, that was uh, well ahead of its time. And um, the chairman Steve Gibson invested a lot of money in it. It probably cost about maybe uh, I don't know thirteen or fourteen million at the time to do. But they had like um brought in sports science, um, they had like oxygen chambers. Um, if you were injured, like which happened to me on quite a few occasions, but if you're injured and you had to get a, an operation, you literally went in the next day or that evening and got an operation done. You had, ten, I think, 10 days or 14 days of training to build you back up. And that type of training was like plyometric type stuff. So what they done at Middlesbrough at that period of time was, was phenomenal. It opened up my eyes to what outside of football what you could do um, and that's why I think I, I sort of have a love of, of, of sports nutrition um, which I'm currently doing at the moment mm. but um, you wake up in the morning time you you know you go in you get your breakfast at the club you've got all your kit there you go out on the training ground you train for you know maybe two hours um, you know you come back you have your lunch you might go back out again depending on, on what the schedule is but it was just a it was a phenomenal experience and Something that I'm very lucky, lucky to experience mm. as well, and look back and say that I've I've managed to sample what a professional football and life would, was like. And um, for other guys, it would be different. Um, but at Middlesbrough, it was just it was a really really nice club to be involved with. Stuff of dreams. It is the stuff of dreams, yeah. And it's um, but like every day, we, it, it is it, it is a challenge. You you know you get injured. You have to you know yeah. how long you have injured for, and then you know you're trying to you know get into the first team really that's what you're trying to achieve and uh, build your fitness up you're trying to win people over so you're putting pressure on yourself to perform even though you're not fully fit and no you're, you're never going to be fully fit if you've got and like playing through injury anyway but yeah. it's one of these things that you just you put yourself under pressure um to perform you you like you've got family back home who aren't putting pressure on you but like you want to achieve for them as well um, and also for your friends you know you you know, you've worked, I've worked sort of all my career to be a, a professional, professional footballer. And now you get the experience and you're trying to grab up with both hands, but still you've got the challenges um, along the way with that. Yeah, sure. And, and what about the camaraderie in the dressing room? Was, was, that, uh, was that difficult? Yeah. 
It is, it was, but it was actually quite it was good. Um, you know, you'd look, you'd have the, the the guys saying, you know, sort of slacking the Irish and all this sort of crack. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just you know, I think we're quite thick skinned and now there was a there was one occasion it got a little bit too much for me and I just had to um and I've said this previously where I, I remember at one point um one of the guys had uh kept going at me about being a, a Fenian and stuff like this and I just yeah and I just remember pulling him off an exercise bike and you know <laughs> uh, and that was that was it it was yeah. like yeah, was I, just, that. That, but I just no I didn't I didn't I didn't I know, or I anything, know. but I was just like you know I couldn't take it was just one of these things but it was mad and I can even remember to this day the guys that I'd be in the whatsapp group now with um, one of the guys a goalkeeping coach up at Bowes and um, a couple of other lads from Dublin and like they just were backing me up 100% uh, you know because you, you do have the, 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 the crack with the, with them and stuff like that um, but at the end of the day there's you know they're trying to get you under your skin um, and you're trying not you're you trying not to bite but there's going to be a period of time where you have to bite um, and oh, of course yeah. but yeah the, 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 the crack is, is good and but we would have been in the reserve changing rooms and you know, but within the first team change rooms, obviously there was like different stuff going on. If you ever get a chance to read um, Paul Gascoigne's book, um, it was about maybe two years, or no, was it? Uh, it was probably one of the first books that he had. It was one of these that it was just, when, as I was reading it, I was like, oh my God, I was there when this happened, where he'd uh, brought, like, t- taken the, the, the bus, um, crashed the bus, um you know, his first team bus, and there were so many different things that went on, and, you know, I know Gaz had done his, his silly stuff back in the yeah. day and all that, but when you read his book, you, you sort of get a better insight to what he was like as an individual, and he was a nice, he was actually a, a nice, he was he was not a nice guy, um, yeah. I remember being on a, he, uh, yeah, he was just troubled. Yeah. He always has demons, you know, sure. Yeah, he just troubled, like, I remember being on a, I remember being injured, um, and sitting on a, on a, a bed one day and he was there with another Irish with an Irish international Keith O'Neill and I remember Gaza was saying like I never Jesus I'm after spending I don't know three million this year and I don't know what I'm after spending it on and he said when he was in Lazio he was convinced that um there was a like they were trying to get him out but he says what had they done like, there was an actual an Irish bar close to where he was staying he said he used to go down to the Irish bar um you know most nights and, and sit there and you know, have drinks and stuff like that, you know, so, mm. um, but it just, like, just learning, listening to these guys, learning mm. from them, and, and then obviously, you kind of, you, but if you do get a chance, the, the book that he wrote was, Jeez, was definitely gives, will. It's, yeah. a, it's an eye opener as to, I suppose, his, how troubled his, his, his life was, but he was an absolute genius um, as, a, as a footballer. I remember, um, he played a reserve game when we went down to Derby County, and he, he just took them apart, and he done this. He done a trick one at, um, at one on one occasion, and even the this the the Derby County bench start clapping him. He was just huh. he That's was not way. yeah. He was he was absolutely just ridiculous skill. But um, but that was the caliber of players that they that they had there at the time. So it was uh, but it was it was really good to try and learn from them. Oh God, yeah, to be to interact and to be around lads like that must have been. Yeah it, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. And you look, they they were professional footballers, and but they were actually they were every, most of them that I met were actually really, really nice guys. And mm. um, great way to say that, isn't it? Yeah, you never never had any problems with them. Um, you know, I think uh, like Keith O'Neill, for example, he was you know played with Norwich and yeah. you know, Irish international. But like Keith, Keith was great to the younger guys that uh, you know within uh, the younger Irish guys and. You know, a good friend of mine who was over at Middlesbrough at the time and played with Longford Town, Jer Robinson. I think Jer, you know, was out sort of. But Jer would have been YTS, so he wouldn't have been on great money at the time. But like, I think Keith would just gave him, you know, this. There's, you know, whatever two or three hundred pound, go and buy yourself some clothes, and you know, oh. don't be spending your own money type thing. But yeah, so that that was sort Jeez. of the, that's sort, that's the sort of guys that's you were brilliant. you were dealing with, yeah. Brilliant, yeah. Oh, I'll, def- I'll definitely get on to Gaz's book. I think the last soccer book I read actually was Joy Barton's. That was some read too. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's another character. Oh, together. Lord. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. story though. God. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sure. these guys have great stories. Look, what we see in the papers, like whether it be GA or, or, um, yeah. or professional footballers, you know, behind it, there's some there's some really interesting stories. And I've been to a couple of, I've been to one event where Russian McConville talked and it was mm. just like, 
like blew my mind, you know, um, you know what he was speaking about. And then there was a guy, an ex footballer, uh, Leon McKenzie. He was torn down to, he went in down the boxing route as well. And they have these guys have, you know, like tr- like troubled but like phenomenal stories. And you know, as as people that we can we can really learn from and, and yeah. sort of. Um, you appreciate you appreciate a book that's like open and honest. Like yeah. there's there's lots of books out there you can read and you kind of do you ever get that feeling when you finish it you're just kind of saying well what did I really get from that Yeah yeah and that's the that's the thing but it's that you know you these books like like Gaza you Joey yeah. Martin there and then like the guys that you go and you, you you listen to speak and when they speak openly and honestly you you really appreciate what they yeah. you know you re- really appreciate them as an individual as a human being you, you see them totally you don't see them as a sports person anymore and yeah. um, you see them as really a, as you know a good a, a, you know kind of fighting demons or whatever but that's what people with, relate to exactly it's that's real exactly. life isn't it it's real like it's you know 100 percent. Yeah. yeah absolutely yeah so talk to me then without jumping too far ahead sean i suppose like when the middlesbrough middlesbrough journey kind of came to an end you know what happened there was it yeah so time um, for you having to come back yeah, it was it was a it was a it was a really tough time. Um, I think when I when I when I found out it was um, I was like I was devastated. I can remember, I can remember finding out and going into the sort of the changing rooms and like getting really upset. And you know, the kind of me uh, the the guy I used to live with at the time came in and he was like sort of consoling me and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh shit, where's my career going to go now? Um, and I. You know, I took a bit of time out. The club are great. They said, look, go on home, spend time with your family and we'll, we'll sort something out and, you know, we'll, we'll try and get you set up somewhere else. And they, they did that. Like, I went down to uh, Wigan Athletic and was there um, initially on a three-month loan. And this is, this, I suppose, the murky side of, of football, um, yeah. you know, as well. And, and I went down and I remember just... It was really like loved it. Guys were absolutely brilliant. Alan McLaughlin, who was an Irish international and scored the goal at Windsor Park, he was there. Michael O'Neill, who's now the manager at Stoke City and previously manager of um, of Shamrock Rovers, he was a, a, a player just coming to the end of his time, I think. There, Roberto Martinez, who was uh, I think he's now yeah. the Belgian manager, but um, he like he was really good to me as a as a person. Like he used to sort of on occasions pick me up or drop me home to to my digs. But it didn't happen for me at Wigan. And you know these are the situations where you you know you're by yourself. And I remember mm-hmm. coming in to the training ground one day and we're playing this keep ball session. And I've said this story so many times, and but it's it's true that you've just got a tipping point where you just go, fuck this, I can't yeah. take any more of it. And um, we we're playing keep ball. And I was already frustrated because I was going to games and I wasn't getting a game and I was felt I was doing well in training. And every other football, every footballer, I mean, any sport yeah. can kind of relate to it. Um, so I was, we're playing this keep ball session. The ball came to me and it took a bad touch. And I mean, the uh, manager went through me now i mean like you you know you he when i when he went through me he oh, absolutely geez. fucking lifted me out yeah. i was like going is this guy thinking is this guy for real is it going mm. it's not that big of a deal as in you know it's a mistake whatever get all get over mm. it but the next time the ball came to me um it hit a divot and went over me foot and um <laughs> and he and i mean i just went oh, here we go and he just went threw me again like I mean he stood inside the circle pointed his finger at me and uh, went totally red in the face and called me you effing blah 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 and um, whatever happened at that moment someone threw up the ball back into the square and I just volleyed it at his head you know, <laughs> I, missed, I missed him and uh, <laughs> luckily I missed him uh, because his teeth would have been knocked down his throat if the ball connected with his face I'm sure but uh I remember just going, shit. And then he, he just went, get the fuck out of here. And I just walked off off the training ground and uh, got a phone call that night just to say, look, we're, we're, you're not going to be kept on. And I was just like, Grant, did, didn't care. If I'm being honest with you, I didn't care. And uh, went in the next morning and um, was ballsy enough, I suppose, as you know, I, I, I wasn't, hadn't got an agent. I was somebody there that was mm. representing me, sort of, but not really. Um, and I remember going in, and Bruce Rioch was the manager at the time. Bruce Rioch was previously a manager at Arsenal. 
Um, I think he may have brought Bear Camp or whatever to the uh, to to Arsenal. But anyway, I remember going in and saying to him, um, you know, I says, I, I want my papers. I'm I'm out here, and he's like, um, I speak to you after training, and he says, um, no, I says I says to him, no, this is really important. It's my career. I really need to speak to you. Um, you know, I just I kind of want I want Dewey here. And this was going back and forth for a couple of minutes. And he says, I told you I'll speak after train, to speak to you after train. And I said, when's that going to be? And with that, the fuck, he just jumped up. He goes, get the fuck out of my office. Cool. And I just went, no, I'm not going. And he just was, get, and he went, he was, he went mad. So anyway, I was brought downstairs and sitting in the, in the canteen. And um, what do you call it? Within two minutes later, um, I got someone came down and says Gaffer wants to see you upstairs. Went in. I says, he, I just says, look, give me my papers. I want were here. And he says, are you sure? And I says, yeah. I says, uh, I'm not happy enough. This isn't for me. Um, and that was it. And uh, you know, mm. it was one of these things where you kind of go, fuck, did I make it? Did I make a wrong decision? And you know, I look back and say, yeah, I kind of gave up on the opportunity of maybe pursuing a career in England a little bit uh, too quick. Yeah. But you know, it all worked out for me in the end. And, um, you know, that was shocking, so, though, that was shocking. It is, but there's, you know, there's, yeah, it is. It's that's, that's the way that's it is. The reality. That's, what that's, that's the that's the reality of it, and um, that would have been about 2000 and probably 2001, I think. Um, you know, it's so an awful with, pity that Valley didn't connect. Oh, here, yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ, yeah, I, I probably would have been getting sent a bill for new dentures or something. Like that. <laughs> um, it's but the yeah, best money you would ever spend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know what? It was the sweet. I caught, you know, when you catch a ball, sweet as a nut. Yeah. Just, I just caught it as it hit the ground. I just caught it as it was leaving the ground, and it was, um, you know, <laughs> it was some land. You know, yeah. Well, like his, his fairness to him, he reflexes like a fucking cat because uh, his head just his head tilted and it was just the finger was like fuck off god you have to laugh that, at, you have to laugh at that moment that life but i know I do, it's a I shocking back, experience i do i look back and to be honest with you i've actually i am um, i kind of I, I sort of hold on to these things in my head at times i was like oh, where the fuck is that bastard now i know um, yeah. and i got i kind of went to google and stuff that. like that yeah and like even a couple of other guys that i remember from sort of growing up or you know, like where's where's that fellow? You know, yeah. that try to do me in the past or whatever. But um, yeah, it's just one of these things as a as a footballer. And you know, you look back, but these are all part of the experience of of growing up. And you know, I, I pass these on to my kids now at this stage. You know, and um, uh, like even yeah, because I can remember you know growing up as a kid and my dad saying to me, he's like, oh look, don't fucking let him talk to you like that or whatever. And you know, you stand up for yourself or you don't back down and. And that, that, that was, it, and that rang true in that in in a couple of uh, times oh, yeah. over in the UK. That this is one of these things that you, that rings true. You know, you, you you stand up for yourself, and you 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 know you you know who you are as an individual, and you've got, you know, you've you've got standards as an individual. I wouldn't like to be spoken to like your man spoke to me, but you're look. He might just say oh, you're being soft or whatever. But fuck that, I wasn't taking yeah, it as simple as that. <laughs> it's an easy thing to say, like you know. But yeah, like, you exactly. think you're, you're over there on your own, like you're. Yeah, like it was very ballsy the way you dealt with it, you know. And, and it was, it was ballsy for being the ward and sitting near, near took his head yeah. off. But um, yeah, but look at the as I said, it's an experience. I was what twenty one or whatever it was at the time, so it was an experience. These things happen, and yeah. um, I'm sure, it hardened yeah. you even more though too. Yeah, know, it does. So. Yeah, yeah, it does indeed. I'm, I'm sure, like if you wherever he is now, I don't. I wouldn't say he progressed too far after that. Now with the way, oh, yeah, it would be interesting to see now. Yeah, I mean, probably be taught to go on Google and see where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> you might get another another crack at that volley. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Grace, so look, I saw. I'd imagine when you came back, you just didn't. You know, I read an interview uh, with you before um, where we talked. We touched on it earlier on where Stephen reached out to you a couple of times, and um, you were working in Dublin at the time, weren't you? And uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, you, you just struck me in the interview that you just had enough of ball, like. You know, you had you didn't really want to see it after that experience. You probably came back a bit disillusioned. Yeah, I did. I would probably come back um totally disillusioned. There was no there was no structure here for I don't think anyway for young guys coming back. And and the thing about it was, remember I was from I was from Longford, I wasn't a dub. Um so you know, if I was a dub I might have come back and then people would have been like, Yeah, you know, you here you go or whatever. Um but I was from Longford, I think I sort of just came back and had no interest in playing and um, you, 
they kind of just went through a phase of right what am I going to do and I uh, thought about going to uh, going back to school I'd left school I'd been in Mel's um, secondary school and then moved on to uh, mine community school and I said maybe I'll go back and get an education or whatever yeah. um, but I remember going in for an interview with a, with a school and your man said to me he says he says football he says you won't have any football you won't have time for football he said you're going to be you're going to be studying full time. I'm like, oh, oh, this just walk. I just straight away, <laughs> not, not, not for me. Yeah. And in fairness to Stephen, he has the image there. Like Stephen was brilliant for me. Um, got me believe in football again. Believe in myself as a footballer. Um, gave me the opportunity. Put me into. It put me in teams when, you know, it was a, you know, it was a tough one for him. A tough call for him to make. If I'm being honest with you, um, exactly. you know, where I was like, you know, I'd be like, I'm not going to be playing in this game and next minute be like you know I want you playing and you know gave me that put me in obviously knew or was told um, at the time you know like of kind of my ability as a footballer mm -hmm. and it just meant he, he tried and nurse, uh, nurtured me um, in a way to sort of I suppose enjoy the game again and I'm still very very good friends with Stephen um, you know so I, I, I owe him a lot, um, you know, to, and I suppose my family as well, because, you know, he, what he done for me, what he done for Longford Town, but it was just great to be able to enjoy football again. Um, yeah. And he, he brought me back, he brought me back into the fold. You can't put a price on that, uh, that leadership and guidance. And the one thing that struck me was his, um, and I just said to myself, God, it's no surprise that he is where he is today when he persisted with calling you. It wasn't just, he yeah. said, no, I'm not interested. All right, good luck. Thanks for taking the call. Like he kept in touch, you know, he didn't. And like yeah. not too managers, not too many managers at that time would I imagine taught, you know, you have to be a certain type of manager to think that way, you know. To yeah, I yeah, do. And it's, it was, it's one of those things with Stephen, like, um, you know, Stephen is, and I seen a quote yesterday from um, Rory Higgins, I think it was, who's gone into the international fall with Stephen. And I've always, Stephen is meticulous about opposition. Like I remember when we played in Europe against Lovett, who are from Bulgaria. Like Stephen, Kenny knew everything about all of their players. He was, wow. he knew the level of detail he went into about these individuals. Um, was just absolutely phenomenal. Like we played out, we we played uh, out in Lovich. I think it was one all in 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 flank here. We played out in Lovich, absolutely not hostile, but ran packed with their supporters. Mm. And um, I think they beat us one nil. But we were we played really good. One of the, a local guy, well uh, from Enda Kenny, uh, I think it was Enda Kenny actually, Mister um, or Henry Kenny, just out there from. Um, I think in Lanesbury had missed a great opportunity to, to send us through um, but we were really unlucky in that game and I think a couple of their players actually went on and played um, one of their players their central midfield player who was phenomenal um, played against Liverpool on one occasion and he took um, he absolutely took Stephen Gerrard to the cleaners I felt in the game and I remember watching mm. the game and going I know that player from somewhere and I went and I Googled him and I was like, yeah, true enough. It was your man that absolutely nearly ran him up against us. And so, uh, but that was, that was the standard yeah. you were playing with, yeah. But Stephen was meticulous in the opposition. Is that Henry Kenny uh, Keener? Is it Keener this? Yeah, it could be yeah, actually Keener. Keener. Yeah, 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 yeah. His brother, Anende, was his other brother. Ende that's was right, played, yeah. played right back, yeah. God, that's unreal, like, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, it was, uh, phenomenal. Yeah, like, to be exposed to that at that time, sure, look, it was... There's no when you hear these things now. There's no wonder why there was success. You know, there's no wonder why that journey with the town was so good. You had such a such governance, like you know, you had that you had that level of professionalism at that stage. At that stage, you know, like yeah. you think about where things are now, and yeah. the education out there, and the awareness and the tactics. Like back then, not that it was years and years ago, but I mean, at that mm. stage, even he was really ahead of his time too. Yeah, he was. And um, like the work that he'd done with, the, with every team that he's been to, um, yeah. like, uh, I suppose like Shamrock Rovers was a little bit different, but like Derry City, Dundalk, um, yeah. the Irish under 21s, um, like he's, he, look, fingers crossed, he'll, he'll do a great job. Yeah, um, you'd love to see like, it. You'd love, you'd love to see it. And it's great that he's had that association with Longford Town as well.
But I'm sure, like, and as you, you'd know more than I would, obviously, but within soccer circles, and it won't be for the want of preparation and passion and, like, good intentions that Ireland won't do well under him. You know, like I say, the people in the game, like, he's, his pathway to the job, like, he's, he's not one of these lads who's had a successful run with one team and then jumped yeah. at an opportunity. He's took his time. He's learned his trade. Yeah. You know, he's gone the right way about it, hasn't he? He has. He's like he's he's he definitely has. He's he's made mistakes, but you learn mm. from those mistakes. And you know, um, he he's he's a he's a great he's a great guy. Um, he's uh, like on, on the picture that you're showing there. Like you know, like that's like even for me, even seeing that picture of how happy I was, and that was I think at the testimonial. Um, yeah. But you know, it was just great. It was great to see, and I I can remember even at the, after the testimonial. Um, Stephen even make, make saying some comments about you know like whatever Sean puts his head to or mind to he he'll, he'll succeed and that's that rang true for me and and to the, to this day because to be honest with you you know when I retired from football you know you you think I thought sort of going through the challenge of rejection from England was difficult retiring from football is a totally different kettle yeah. of fish altogether so you know but you know by having the you know, someone noticing that in you, um, you know, and giving you that belief, you kind of just say to yourself, you know, this is, I, I'm, I'm strong enough to get through these situations. And um, yeah, lucky enough, I, I, I was. It's brilliant. Uh, it's brilliant to be able to say. And that's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing story. If, if that left, if he's picking that team now and that, that left back position is free and the left wing position is free, <laughs> where, where does he put you first? Um, I think he would probably have me as a. I think he probably have me as a winger. Um, but in saying that, um, what you call it as my career uh, sort of evolved. I, I like I was grand playing as a winger, but there were so many times I sort of got like the ball was wasn't coming to me enough. When when I got put back into a sort of a wing back role, um, I yeah. was like, like I was good at running as a youngster. I could like run, I suppose, not all day, but I had a good engine on me. Yeah. But I used to love playing as a wing back because you could see everything that's in front of you. And, yeah. you know, you can influence the game so much. Um, and I was just blessed with that I had. I was, I was quick, but I, like, I had a good engine on me. Um, and when you've got opposition players asking you to slow down or stop running, then you know, like, you know, you've, you've won your battle. So, um, but uh, yeah, look, I... I, I, I think he probably put me as a as a, a winger, um, but I would like to sort of uh, move into the, the the wing back role because you just get so much of the ball. You know, I used to love coming off the games after games and knowing you were able to influence a match um, from such a deep position. Um, you know, you, like where you get the ball and you can and your own eighteen yard box and you're able to sort of get up to their eighteen yard box within a short period of time. Then you can take pressure off your own team. And even look back, I've seen a video there not so long ago of um, the goal that I'd scored against the uh, Bowes in the League Cup final. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I scored them against Shamrock or Shelbourne as well. And I remember just looking and, you know, um, I was like, oh, Jesus. Like, I, 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 to me, I looked quick. And I was like, oh, I remember showing it to uh, my uh, fiance, Jacqueline. I was like, oh, she's like, is that you? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, Jesus, but you were quick. I was like, yeah, it actually was. <laughs> like, so, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, as you get older, you know, those those uh, those yards become um, longer and slower. But uh, yeah, but no, I had a great, I had a great time at, at Longford Town and under Stephen Kenny. So you're a wizard, lad. You no know, man, so no, no sense otherwise, but um, yeah, look at and you know, this is a quote I took from an article yours before. It interested me. Um, I'd always be a self analyzer after football. I was just mm. struck me, and I, I suppose I want to know to what level, you know, oh. when you came home. Like, were yeah. did, did it, was your father a soundboard for you? Did you like? Would you have? Uh, did you have really. somebody, or was it just this internal voice all the time? It was. It was. It was internal. Yeah, it was internal. Like um, my dad, my family never pushed me into any sport. Um, like they were, Jesus, they were absolutely brilliant in terms of um, just letting me just do whatever I want to do. If I make mistakes, they're my mistakes. Um, but I, like, you know, I can remember times coming in, like, as, like even playing with Longford Town and, you know, uh, my dad, like I'd be lying in bed, I'd be going through stuff in my head. And next minute the door, the, my dad would come in, he'd go, well done tonight, you've done really well, well done. And I was like, I'd, he'd go out there and i go, Jesus Christ, fuck. 
you know, like, I, yeah. like, it, and just that because he's your dad. Do you know what I mean? And uh, you know, it it was great. To, like for me, it was great. But That's I'd close. always, yeah, I'd, I'd always analyze it. Um, you know, mm. was, uh, like I go home from a, a football game, and like a lot of footballers, I, I suppose you mm. you analyze the what you're doing wrong in the game as opposed to what you're doing right. And you, but you, you it's, it's all a visualization. If you're in a situation again, what would you do? And um, you know, but I, I would always analyze or self analyze my performance. Um, I never watched myself on, on never watched myself on TV. Um, hated watching myself on TV. Um, to be honest with you, I sort of because if I did, I'd over analyze myself. Yeah, no. I'd become I'd become too critical of yourself. Um, but sort of there was bits and games like where you just say, okay, I know I need to do better there. Um, but it was. You, you just you want to you want to improve as a footballer, um, and in order to do that, you, you you analyze yourself. And I think if you're honest with yourself, then um, it's easier to sort of um, do things. If you're being told you're not doing something right, you, uh, attitude yeah. might be like, "Oh fuck you, you're just having a go at me." Yeah. Um, but How if you can process? analyze, yeah, exactly, yeah. If you if you can analyze yourself as a footballer, and if you've been if you've honestly done well. Or, you know, if you're getting a pat on the back, but you kind of say to yourself, I actually didn't do that well. Um, you know, if you can do that, then you're always sort of um, yeah. challenging yourself as a footballer. I, I, think, I think the younger sports people can get good at that process, like being able to self-reflect and learn um, learn from it's like positive and negative experiences from as a young as age possible to have a, such a, a better chance holistically yeah. going forward in their sporting career you know because as you yeah. said there it's how you inter- you can choose to bite back or you can now it's yeah. important too how it's delivered to you as well and I know yeah. that but to be able to process and go yeah I see where you're coming from right I need to improve on this I need to improve on that yeah ex- exactly and look I through my career I'd like even with Alan Matthews when Man- Alan was manager at Longford Town um, and like we so when Alan first came in, like I wouldn't have been getting a look in, you know, and mm. it was just one of these things. It's like, right, oh, he's challenging me, but you know, I'd have a good, like, really good relationship with Alan now. Yeah. Um, and you know, and Alan's the reason why I've got winners' medals. Um, you know, so you can, like, there's these are the things you you look and you see. Okay, who's who's influenced your career? Um, what have you learned from this individual? And you bring it forward into life outside of football. Um, and I think a lot of the things that, you know, that I'd done as a footballer in terms of my attitude and how professional I was and things like that, you know, I bring that into my current role within, um, within working with Connecticut Sports at the moment. So, you know, you're always professional. I deal with teams. So I understand, you know, that what they need is, in, as, you know, from a, a sort of a professional or what they need from somebody. So, you know, that's that's the thing that you you'll always be able to bring these little um, aspects of your football career into your uh, career outside of life or outside of football, should I say? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's a great point, um, and it's, you know, it's so important, so important. Yeah. And, like moving on to that, you know, that devastating period in your life where you're you know, you're flying high, you're moving on to the next stage, you're making the next move, and then all of a sudden, Sean's just whipped away from you. And I know you've done, you've had several conversations about this in several interviews, and you're at a different point in your life now, I'm sure. And, you know, I don't want to draw you back too much, but there's a few little things I'd like to talk about. I suppose the first thing, like when I heard the story myself years ago, I was young, was on my own team, you listen to the story, and you go, God, that's, that's tough, that's devastating. You can't imagine it, but then like everybody else, the world keeps spinning and you just keep moving on. But there's one part, of, um, when you got to the stage of being able to exercise again and being able to, you know, exercise to an extent daily. Yeah. I just, you know, I did say to myself at that point, God, I said, that is a great thing that yeah. you can do that. Like, because, you know, we can't underestimate the importance of exercise in everybody's life, you know, for, from a mental health perspective, obviously nowadays it's it's a hot topic. Yeah. But I'm sure for you, like at I suppose currently, what um to what level of exercise do you participate in? <laughs> um I do whatever I can do. Um you know it's it it's I ch- I challenge my body if I'm being honest with you. Um I'm not one to 
Um, but for example, my plan tomorrow morning uh, is to sort of get up at five o'clock in the morning and head up the, the Dublin mountains and, and do a, a mountain run and get back then and, and log on to um, lectures um, for studies and, and work and everything like that. So that's the plan tomorrow. Whether it'll, it'll happen, I don't know. But um, no, I, I challenge myself um, in terms of fitness constantly. And, you know, we, uh, a couple of my friends, Alan Kirby from Balnali and, and Gary Casson, we, we actually, um, myself and, um, and Kerbs, had cycled um, part of the Tour de France, which would be the, the Maramot, I think it's about 172k of a cycle. And I'm not a cyclist, but it's wow. a challenge. But for me, um, it's when I feel alive, if I'm being honest. That, that sounds probably stupid, you know. But no, it's, not at all. I, it, I look back, and I've said this, and I've, I've thought about it myself. It's like, oh, why do I put myself through it? It's back, is to doing these things when I could just literally not. Um, but it's the what I love about the challenge is that you actually feel alive when you're doing it. Um, you know, it's it makes me appreciate that I am actually alive if I'm yeah. you know, not to be morbid about no, anything. No, sure. Um you know and the amount of hard times yeah, you've experienced like it's ex- exactly. So it's 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 just one of these things and it, um you touched you mentioned there in terms of mental health um which is at the moment as well, and not just at the moment, but in general in, 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 in society. Exercise is so important, and for uh, in order for for me. So when I was told I couldn't play football again, um, the GAA team in in uh, Balnali, um, Connolly's the one of the guys yeah. was kind kind enough to give me a key, and they have a little gym there. And I used to go down at I think six o'clock in the morning, jump on a spinning bike, uh, then go out and do laps of the the pitch, come back in, do the spinning bike. I was always in that professional mindset, um, but constantly challenging constantly challenging the body the body can it can adapt yeah look i'd probably push it a bit too much at times but um it's just it's just what i, I can't i can't do any different um i had to go to get a check up there a number of uh probably this time actually just this time last year roughly um where there was a, a couple of uh, episodes with the pacemaker yeah. And the cardiologist had said to me, he says, what are you doing at the moment? He says, I'm doing mountain runs. He says, I'm going out to do the Czech Republic with some friends to do a Spartan race. And he's like, what's that involved? And I was telling him. And he's like, why? He says, just go walk and just take up golf. And I was just sitting there. I was like, you think to myself, not a chance. I was just, Jesus Christ. As soon as I got out that door, I text the lads. And it's like, I'm grand for this event. Um, no bother. And now me, me poor ma now she'd be like, oh Jesus, be careful, be careful of what's going on, mm. and just you know. But and I could, I get that. But for me, I just like being being active is 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 like is like a drug for me. If I'm being honest, exercise is my drug. If I'm being honest, it's sort of, yeah. um, you know, you could go one route of drinking, and I just didn't go down that route after retiring from football. Um, you know, I sort of stuck the head into. Um, you know, training and then uh, through college and then luckily enough into a, a career outside of that. Yeah, it took you a long time to get to that point, I know. And you had a lot of a lot of dark days, um, mm-hmm. Sean. You, had a lot of, you know, you, you've addressed it several times, you know. I, I'm sure you look back on it all now in a different perspective, but it's very... Yeah, it, know, it's it very, is... It, it's it, sorry. Go on. No, you're you're right. A totally different perspective because I I was like f- like I remember like losing the, my absolute nut back in the house in Balnali and mom like taking my niece out of the house like you know because I just was in a fit of rage and mm. um you know I think it was actually one of the first people that contacted me I think was actually um Marie McCormick actually when she when when the news broke um. Uh, I, I, she was the first person I spoke to, I think, in, in Longford. And, uh, but it was just rage. It was just, you know, where's my career going? What am I going to do? Um, yeah, exactly. You put so much time and effort into it. But you look back now and it was, it was such a learning experience for me as an individual. Um, and I learned, as I've said countless times, I've, I've learned so much about myself as an individual by, um, by going through that period as well. Um, it's sort of, Again, I can pass this on to my kids, you know, in, in difficult situations, um, and 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 try and progress from from it. Um, mm-hmm. If they're in a, in a, in a 
kind of faced with something as, as daunting. But at the end of the day, it was like it was like a death when football, when you have to retire, it's like a death, you know, especially when it's taken away from you so suddenly. So young. And yet you, you twenty seven, you know, weren't you? Yeah, I was twenty seven. I just got a move to draw to United and great full time professional setup, what I would was dying to do and you know, I was sort of hoping that there might be an opportunity of like really kind of getting maybe a, a league title and um, you know, which would have been fantastic. But it look, it wasn't to be the case. And but what transpired out of that then is that, you know, I went to college in Athlone and um, you know, met my now um fiance in, in Athlone and have three kids with her. So um, you know, these Amazing. these things yeah, these things work in strange in strange ways and you know, like I, I remind myself about it, you know, quite regular and uh, about sort of, you know, these type of sliding doors, what could have happened, you know. But yeah, I, I, I was lucky and I am lucky um, to be where, where I'm at. And, I'm, you know, the, the, my current role allows me to still be involved in sport and, and speak to individuals within sport. Um, and I, I'm lucky that way that my, my boss, my CEO or the, the, the company, um, really believe in me as an individual and, and, and are willing to allow me to progress a career within sports nutrition or performance nutrition, whatever, whatever way you want to view it. That's great to hear, Sean. It's brilliant. Um, you know, I'm sure you, you realize more than any, like the blessings in your life now, you know, and uh, especially these times even make you hone in even more. But yeah. through, through everything you've been, you know, it's, it's an experience, like everything you've been through, you know, not everybody can pass that knowledge on because you have experienced so much, I know. And <laughs> I can't yeah. say I agree with you at the minute with the the extremities, you still push your body. Like, yeah. I'm sure when, when you, like the pacemaker is obviously another life, another big change for you in your life. Like, and Yeah, it like, is. There must have been a lot of anxiety around going back exercising after that, was there? Yeah, there, there was. Like, before I got the pacemaker in, like, you know, I remember going out and playing. I was like, shit, I shouldn't be doing this. Or should I be doing this? And I was like, Jesus, was, like, I'll be running, going, running up and up in the woods. And I'd be like, oh, God, am I going to, is something going to happen here? Will somebody find me? How is it going to? So uh, yeah. that's the, it's the, those things are, yeah, yeah, you do, you do have that in your head. and Scared of life, oh, yeah. It's scared, it's scared of life, oh, yeah. And I remember when I, uh, when I got the news of, possible having to retire and um, I actually played a game um, it was drawn against on dock a number of years ago in a friendly just before the season started and I remember going out on the pitch and sort of warming up and even it was, even then it was in my head I was like oh, what what's what something happens now like mom and dad aren't here or mm-hmm. anything you know so but you, these are they're there it's, it's a natural thing um, and yeah. you know but outside of that then you just kind of with the pacemaker it gives you comfort and um, you know when I go back in and get it checked you know they're obviously they, they just can read and they say you're obviously still training and I'm like yeah and you're probably training too much I'm like oh well, look I just need to I just need it that's my sort of that's my uh, way of escaping sort of certain things and um, and I, 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 I just love being active I love being fit I've got kids that I just want to be active with um, you know, so it's I, I try to be a role, obviously, try to be a good role model for them. No, oh, there's no doubt about that, Sean. You're a great role model, but I know it, it, it would have taken a long time to get to that point, even. But I suppose if I'm, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I think like I'd like to think maybe someday you will get to the point where you know you'll exercise, but maybe not push yourself as much. But look at that, yeah, your, well, that, I'll tell that, you. That, that's your turn. I'm not going to. I'm not no, going to encourage the fiance a, here. No, but uh, you, you, it's funny because I, t- I turn or I turn forty now next month, um, and nice. I, I said to her, I says, Jesus, when I turn forty, I'll be up the mountains every day and stuff like this, you know." So she's <laughs> look, she she's used to me. She's like used, used to, to be, sure, yeah. You know, she's used to be my now. Yeah. Uh, thanks a million, Sean. Look, and thanks for being so. And I, and I am conscious of how many times. You know, no, it's I, not. I, I, yeah, I don't mean I'm not glancing over it in any way, shape, or form. I know how in depth you've got about it before. I just I am very conscious of the stage you're at in your life now. And yeah, you know, yeah. Look, it's it's look, there'll be there'll be uh, you know people, guys, girls that will go through similar situations, and you know, um, and I, I'm always there, sort of, for a parent because you know, um, my parents were obviously up the walls and worried back then but yeah. you know now I'm a parent now and I can kind of see it from two different sides um, 
you know, of, of where it's, where I kind of, where I am, where I was and where I am now. So for me, it's, um, you know, like if there's, like I'm, I'm always there if people need to sort of bounce stuff off anyway. So I, and I always have been, so I've done a bit of work. I know Brendan O'Carroll from Mrs. Brown's Boys mm. has um, donated like a, a huge amount of money to yeah, Cardiac Screen. And, unbelievable. Um, yeah, which is fantastic. And um, I, was look, I was lucky enough to sort of meet Brendan and his wife, Jenny, and, um, you know, thank them for what they've done and, and was able to see what their investment done basically saved like a, a young guy's life. Um, I think the, 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 the guy is from, from Sligo and, you know, um, he, I think it was 15, 16 years of age and without the cardiac screen and that was in place, you know, um, a, a parent wouldn't have... Um, yeah, basically, if, you know, the parent would be without a child. Um, I'm sure at this stage, but um, I look. I, I'm I'm always thankful to the to the doctor, um, Doctor Alan Bourne, who first diagnosed it, um, the, the the heart condition. Um, I'm always thankful to him, and you know, I've spoken to him since, and you know, kind of get, I've given him a lot of praise for what he's done because. You know, he's a doctor and he sees things every single day, but outside of that, what he, he probably doesn't realise or, you know, when I said it to him, it was like he, him doing, doing his job properly allowed my mom to hear me coming in the door, um, you know, uh, you know, laughing or joking or being, or phoning or, you know, and, and those, that's just, for me, for me, it's a huge thing. Um, but for him, when I explained it, you know, he, he got emotional because, He's able to see of me growing up as an individual, um, and yeah. without without him doing his job properly, um, you know, he, you know, I would def one hundred percent wouldn't be here, and um, and I, he he said that in in, in an interview that I, I sort of standing beside him when he was saying it, and he nearly dropped there and there and the, there and then on the spot, and mm-hmm. straight after that I went back to I was living with Alan Kirby in Selbridge at the time, and I remember. Kerbs was playing with St. Pat's and I remember just coming into him and was like, just embrace me, mate. And I just gave him a hug. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what? I says, you know what? I says, don't care what you think about it. Just let us, let me hug you. Um, and that was it, you know? So these are, these are the type of things and, you know, um, that you, you go through and that you, people don't see, um, no. you know, behind, the, behind closed doors. But, you know, for, for me, Kerbs had been, I, I was very lucky to have a solid group of people in and around me good support structure and the support from people from Longford Town, everything like that was just brilliant. Um, you know, so that, that helped me get through a lot of, uh, the, 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 I suppose the, sh- the shite or the nonsense yeah. that I had to deal yeah, with. Yeah, there's no point saying any other way because that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's one thing I love and you've touched on it several times is like the amount of people that are still in touch with you and the touch in with you. I just think that's so important. Yeah, like you, yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's, it, even during football, like guys I would have played against um, and would have been like, oh, don't really like him as a footballer, yeah. but we're actually close as friends. Uh, so you people know? surprise you, like, you know? Yeah, yeah they yeah, surprise yeah. you. And, and, but you're, you're outside, of, you're in a professional zone. And, mm. you know, you, you try and, what you do is that you try and do your best, but you're playing football, you try and do your best, you give it your all. Um, and the pe- I was looking at the people of Longford and the supporters of Longford Town. Um, knew that when I went out on the pitch, I always gave it my all, um, you know, and get like and you know dedicate a lot of my career to you know being successful at Longford Town, and and it, it reaps rewards. Um, you know, I, you know, even now when we go out and have a couple of drinks, we will talk to supporters, and I love hearing supporters talk about stories of you know at Longford Town and you know, when goals went in and cup finals and I'd be like, oh, oh yeah, what was your reaction? And what was the reaction in the pub? And, you know, when we're one guy saying, he says, the doors belted open and there was a fella standing <laughs> on the ground and they were running across and they didn't care he was there. They just wanted to celebrate that we'd, we'd won the cup finals. So these, nice. but these are, these are fantastic moments. And, um, you know, we were, we were lucky to have them and I was lucky to have them as a footballer. Yeah, brilliant, Sean. Thanks so much. So building on from that, what, what was your... Greatest, greatest achievement, moment. yeah. Um, my greatest achievement, I would say, uh, winning the FAI Cup um, for Longford Town, and I suppose in 2003, um, but retaining it in uh, 2004 as well was was phenomenal. Um, and you know, 
That's where you become like, great, isn't it? That's where that team is great. Like yeah, that's, that's it was. Really. It was, and, and we we won the league cup again that year. Yeah. Um, you know, so we done the I suppose the cup double. Um, but that was for me winning the the FAI Cup was absolutely brilliant, and um, it was just great to be able to bring some achievement back to Longford. Um, and you know, my parents are like I, I do when I was playing football. I do. You know, I obviously want to represent myself well on the pitch, but my parents live in Longford, and my, you know, my sister, you know, and my niece and all that, they still live in Longford. And my niece and my my now my nephew now is like going, oh, I wish I was able to see you playing football and mm. all this. And they're able to sort of look back and see me holding the cup as you're, you know, the image that yeah. you're shown there. And um, so that makes me proud. Um, it, like for them, they've got an uncle that's sort of achieved something in terms of sport and success. Um, and, you know, for my family as well, who live or are still living in Longford, for them to to know that I've, you know, I've had success with the local team um, has, been, has been brilliant. But I definitely think winning the FAI Cup um, the first time round was, was just a fantastic feat because nobody, nobody gave us a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, I can remember my granddad sitting in, this, in, the, in the stands that day, um, absolutely delighted. Um, <laughs> and he, was, he was from Valley Fairmont, but... And um, you know, sitting in and so proud of me, um, my like my my grandparents who were all alive at the period of time, I think, and to retreat and where anyway, and um, you know, they were just so proud um, of the fact that what what we'd achieved, and they for them were watching it on television, and um, you know, for them seeing their grandson on TV was a it was it was a big thing because all they would love live for was the it was the late late on a Friday night um, <laughs> you know or the six o'clock news or whatever it was but yeah it was just one of these things that you know even the, I can see uh, young Ben Hussey there in that picture there with the hat on um, and yeah, yeah. yeah no Ben so, well I was like yeah, I was, yeah, I was looking at yeah. him in pictures I was talking to him my god yes that's I think that's young Ben Hussey there so you, you look, shout out to Ben if he's listening on this yeah yeah exactly so <laughs> But brilliant, brilliant times, brilliant yeah. for, um, you know, yes, really, is. really, really exciting times and great times to look back on. Mighty, Sean, mighty. How would you like to be remembered? How would I like to be remembered? Um, I suppose someone that, I suppose, gave their, gave their all, really, um, you know, it was, um, you know, really just put my heart and soul into the playing for for Longford Town um, and outside of that as well, sort of what I've done to try and be as professional as possible, um, you know, that I represented the the, the, the colours, the, the crests uh, with professional attitudes, that my teammates would always count on me, um, that they could trust in me in, in difficult situations um, and that my parents then, looking back on pictures, would like, would say, Jesus, that's my son. So, um, yeah, it was just as a that gave it my all really. That was positive. Um, you know, really embraced the being on the football pitch. You know, I used to love like I'm looking at the boots that you have there. Like that, what I remember putting on those boots, and you know, they were like slippers. And I remember putting them on and just going, oh, I feel I'm gonna have a good game today. <laughs> yeah. And it was just this is one of those things that as a footballer you remember, and you know, like Small I. Things. This, yeah, exactly. Like I, I like even looking at the picture there on the left hand side of, you know, I used to love when the ball was coming and just ch- chesting it and taking go it on, in my stride. Up. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And the, even before that ball hit my chest, I actually knew where I was going. And um, you know, it, it those type of things. I, you know, how you as a footballer, you, they never leave you. Instinct as a footballer never leaves you. You might become rusty. You become old. You don't become as fit and stuff like that. You become quicker in the brain. Um, yeah. As a footballer, you see things a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, just as a, as an individual, I just love. I'd I'd like to be remembered as someone that was positive, gave it the all, and um, you know people appreciated the the the, the work that I done. And I I know that's I know that's the case. And I see. You know, a, a, like a there from there. Um, yeah, I just that, that struck me that just the quote because it was just like you know the likes of you and many others you played with paved the way for these guys. You know. Yeah, but like I, I remember a, I actually remember a as a nipper, and I think there's, I think there's, a, there's a relation like we're, there's, we're related in some way through my father's oh, really? side, as far as I know. And okay. a is 
as a young kid, I have to say, he has fantastic ability. He is, I remember probably, maybe when he was 10, 11 years of age, he was phenomenal um, as, a, as a young kid. And it's great to see a local guy get a chance like that. Um, he's, you know, he's got great ability. Um, and if he keeps his head on the shoulders, he could do some really, really good things. And, um, but I know, I know his family well. Um, and it's great to see that you know, he's got the opportunity to, to wear Longford Town colours because you know, he's definitely got the ability to, to really progress in, in terms of career. Lovely words, Sean Fairplay. You're on the spots, my friend. Uh, yeah. What journey or path do you think you would have taken if you decided not to meet Stephen Kennedy? Oh, definitely wouldn't have been involved in football. Um, really? Yeah, I don't think I'd have been involved in football. Um, I'd say I probably would have drifted. Yeah, I probably would have just drifted here and there. But um, it did, good question, but... I think it was what Stephen gave me in terms of belief. Um, mm. If he hadn't of, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I, I, I don't think I would have been involved in football, and um, not even in the coaching aspect. Um, you probably would have talked out for the Connellys. Probably would have talked out for the Connellys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, would have had to learn the rules of the, of the sport <laughs> as well because I, I actually got banned from playing GAA in Mel's because I remember. Uh, the ball came to me. Uh, we're playing. We're playing a hat. We're playing GA at uh, football at uh, PE. And I remember the ball came to me, and I took it on my chest <laughs> and then uh, start start soloing it just by not hand hand soloing, just soloing it with the ball. Yeah, and uh, exactly. And I, got, <laughs> I actually I got a, I got banned from from um, from PE for a number of weeks. So uh, the, the following the following week, the teacher said, "You're gonna play by error rules." And I was like, "Oh, you no. take back." You know, so yeah, when you think back, but look, it's it's funny thinking back. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, of course. Looking at that, I can, I yeah. can imagine, you know, yeah, that would have been like completely outrageous. Yeah, exactly. Absolute yeah. blasphemy. Don't, you be say, try, don't, don't be trying that now, the ordinary. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, no, I probably wouldn't have been involved with football if I'm being honest with you. I, I met Stephen about a month, two months, actually, probably three months ago with Keith Andrews up in a local coffee shop. And uh, I remember him saying to me, and it went over and he big hug and everything like that. And he was like, you know what? He says, he said to Keith Andrews, Sean was the best footballer I ever saw. And I was like, get the fuck over here. And because uh, <laughs> he went on a recommendation, it was Stephen didn't actually see me playing. He actually went on a recommendation, I believe, of Brian Kerr. So, um, you know, which was great to even hear that. But uh, it was cool. just, it just even at, like kind of a number of years after, obviously, Stephen being my manager that he still embraces me. But yeah, he's a great, great guy. But um, yeah. That's amazing, Sean. That's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, your second and last one. Uh, yeah. who, was, who was the best player you played with during your time at Longford Town? Oh, good question. Jesus, that is a good question. Um, putting on a, putting yeah. on a fence here, <laughs> uh, Yeah, yeah. There, do you know what? There was a period of time... I, I know there were so many great ones. Like, I there, yeah, but it's difficult. Period, it is difficult. Um, I probably I probably have to say, like, I know he's my best mate, but um, Alan Kirby. Alan Kirby. But, like, Kirby's... Although he's my best mate, Kerbs would have played with Villa um, and would have played with serious talent um, over Aston Villa as well. Um, obviously played with Ireland under 21 in Malaysia um, with Damien Duff. Um, you know, but Kerbs pro would probably be, I'd have to say, um, one of the best footballers um, I've, I've played with. And that's not just me saying that, actually. There was a guy I, I was in contact um, who was... Um, Alan Mann, he's the manager of the women's team at Man City and I'd messaged him um, via LinkedIn and I just said, uh, oh, I was chatting to one of your, a friend of yours or a guy that knows you called Alan Kirby and he was just like, Alan Kirby, what a footballer. Mm. Kirby was a lovely footballer and he was, he was just picked up great positions um, you know, and he had a great career. Kirby a, had a fantastic career as a footballer um, you know, and He's he's a really good guy, but I would say probably Kerbs outside of that, and um, with like with some great strikers, with Desi Baker who was at who yeah. was at Man United as a youngster, and um, obviously Eric Levine, there was Shani Francis yeah. at Birmingham, and um, then there was like guys like Shane Barrett who was at Wolves, there was um, you know Barry Ferguson at Coventry, like yeah. there was um, Brian McGovern who was at Arsenal. Um, Stephen Paisley was at Man City. You like you had Sean Dillon, who went on to play with um, Dundee United and have a great career over there. 
Um, but you had some really top guys, um, you know, playing football or Star Share and Dean Fitzgerald. There was a huge host. But I, look, I, I would, I'd have to say, um, Alan Kirby would have been my yeah, would, be, would have been the best player that I that I would have played with. Good man, brilliant, Sean. Appreciate the honesty. Uh, some talent no in that squad, like when you think when you think of all the experience they had, it was Yeah, there there was. It was great, great guys. Um like even out of that, I was thinking of Dave Moon, he was a striker for us and he went over to Reading and Moons um had a fantastic season with us and then went on to Co- to Cork City, who had an even better season down there. Mm. Um but yeah, there was some smashing, smashing players um within within the club. And when you're looking back now, look the club are lucky to get these guys as well. Yeah. Um, you know, Stewie Bourne, Paul McNally, Vinny Pert, obviously. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, you know. So, you know, I'm I'm like I'm leaving out guys, um, and I I really shouldn't be. But, oh, that's the hard part of these, you know, these that's, chats. That's like, the hard, you know, that's that's the hard <laughs> yeah, part. But, yeah, it's you know, but I I'd, I'd say um yeah I I would put Kerbs down as being the best player that I that I played with during my time at Longford Town. Great show, Sean. Thanks a million. Uh, your story, like I, I knew before I was chatting to you, your story is incredible and everything you've been through. And, you know, I suppose I'd be, <laughs> I said, as, as a guy, lad, which I would be uh, primarily, I suppose, to be, I, I could be being given out to for speaking on behalf of Longford Town supporters, but I, I'm sure they'll all be in agreement that the town loved you and always will love you and appreciate your contribution you made to Longford Town soccer and sport and life in Longford. And, It'll forever be cher- cherished, and I think it's something you should be very proud of. Um, no matter when you look back, and I think the beauty of these chats as well, as we were talking there now, is it's a lovely thing even for your your three little lads to have down the line, you know. And mm. the whole point of this, it's just it's just great to have the opportunity to get you on for a chat and just give you the time and the spotlight you deserve. So I, uh, I, have, I have nothing else to say on that, you know, and that's... No, look, I appreciate it, Sean. Look, I, I absolutely, I think it's, um, you know, it, uh, very kind of you to say them words and um, really uh, humble to hear them, to be honest with you. So look, I, I appreciate it. I um, appreciate you reaching out to me. I think what you're doing is, is a, a fantastic initiative. Um, and look, uh, for, for me, I was only too happy to get involved in it. So... Hopefully, uh, the, the people that will listen to it will enjoy it. And um, I wish you continued success in, in, in this uh, great venture. Top man, Sean. Thanks a million. And make sure now and, and pull back on the old exercise, won't you? <laughs> <I'll see. laughs> I can't promise you that. <laughs> I'll start a war now in the house. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Even he's saying it. Yeah, Sean, yeah. God bless. Stay safe and hello to the family. Mind yourself, buddy. Thanks again for reaching out. No problem at all, man. Take it easy. All the best, pal. Bye-bye.